How do fish breathe? So let's have a closer look at gills then. First of all, we've got our gills located behind the head of the fish, mouth open, water's coming in through the mouth and it washes over the gills. The heart of the fish is located here just behind the gills. It's a two chamber heart and it's pumping deoxygenated blood that's come back from the body up into the gills and also it's taking oxygenated blood back to the heart and then pump through the body. One of the really important things we see with gas exchange surfaces is that it's got a large surface area. So I've represented some of the gills just down here and you can see the finger-like, very large surface area. One way to consider what I mean by a large surface area is if we consider me drawing around my fist and comparing that to drawing around my palm of my hand with my fingers outstretched. You can see that the line is much longer when my fingers are outstretched. And so that's a representation of a larger surface area. And this is just in 2D. If it was in 3D, it would be even larger. Um, so we said a gas exchange surfaces have a very large surface area. Another thing we see with gas exchange surfaces is that they have a concentration gradient. This diagram here represents deoxygenated blood that's come back from the body, pumped through via the heart into the gills. And it's got a low concentration of oxygen, deoxygenated. Whereas the water has a high oxygen concentration. So it's the difference between the two, high concentration in the, um, in the water, low concentration in the blood means that the oxygen is going to diffuse across the, the very fine thin membrane of the blood vessel, of the capillaries, into the blood and then therefore the blood will then have high oxygen concentration, that's why I've drawn it in pink or red, and that blood then is going to get pumped back to the heart and around the body. So there's two concepts we see with a gas exchange surface. One, we have a large surface area. Two, we have a concentration gradient. There's a concentration gradient because there's low oxygen in the blood. Now, the way that this gets maintained is when the heart is continually pumping more deoxygenated blood into the gills all the time and taking away the oxygenated blood. So that way there's always low oxygen in the blood and high oxygen in the water. But how do we maintain high oxygen in the water? Well that's here, that's where the, the fish needs to be continually getting water across the gills, continually bringing water that's got high oxygen content, high concentration of oxygen across the gills. So the fish might do that by swimming with its mouth open. There's a third concept, and that is that the blood vessels are very thin. They're like one cell thick, so the oxygen is able to diffuse across the membrane very easily. A fourth one, no problems with fish, is that the surfaces need to be moist uh, because the oxygen needs to be dissolved in the water. Some people think that the oxygen that the fish takes out of the water is because they're actually splitting H2O to release oxygen, but that's actually not the case. It's just that we've got dissolved oxygen, O2 molecules, within the water, and that's what the fish are taking out. So why can't a fish breathe out of water? Well, it's because when, we, when the fish gets out of the water, all of these filaments, all of these single gills collapse on each other and so we don't have that large surface area. It's like the hand being like this instead of like this. So it just simply doesn't have enough surface area for adequate gas exchange to occur. So if we have a look at one of these filaments in more detail, we can see here that we've got deoxygenated blood. So this has got low oxygen coming back or back from the body through the heart and that gets pumped here through um, a blood vessel into the filament 
And then we've got really a, a web of capillaries, uh, very, very small, very thin walled and large surface area capillaries here. And uh, the, the water the, with a high concentration of oxygen is washing across this, um, this filament, washing across the capillaries. And it's through this part here, this is where the oxygen moves in to the blood. And then the oxygenated blood then gets pumped out. So my diagram here is represented by this more detailed diagram here.